Okay, so you want to dive into this Asian summit in Laos. Probably a good idea. It's going to be a big one. We've got articles, briefings, the whole works. And let me tell you, things are about to get interesting. What's really interesting is how Laos is using this summit, you know, as their moment in the spotlight. They're pulling out all the stops, decorations, security drills, even closing schools. Wow. Can you imagine? 2,000 delegates all descending on Vientiane. It's like uh, the world's most important convention, but with way higher stakes. Definitely. And so speaking summit, of stake. With all these global players, it's a real test. Yeah. Especially with this year's theme. Enhancing connectivity and resilience. Honestly, that sounds like it's straight out of some corporate retreat. It does, doesn't it? What are they actually getting at with this connectivity thing? Okay, so think of ASEAN like a network, right? And they're trying to make that network faster, stronger, more efficient. We're talking supply chains, boosting small businesses, maybe even a revamp of that ASEAN-China free trade agreement. So like real world impacts on trade, jobs, even just like the price of stuff. That's a far cry from corporate jargon. Exactly. And then there's that resilience part. Think of it as ASEAN uh, preparing for a SCARM and that crisis in Myanmar. Mm -hmm. Definitely on their radar. They want to show they're making progress on humanitarian aid, but realistically, it's complicated. And it's not like Myanmar's the only storm brewing, right? We've got the war in Ukraine. The Middle East is heating up again. How do you even begin to handle all that as a region that's trying to, like, project a united front? Well, that's where those dialogue partners come in. We're yeah. talking countries like the U.S., China, Japan. Mm -hmm. They all have a stake in the region. It's a real balancing act for ASEAN, trying to assert themselves while also managing all these different interests. Makes you wonder about those side conversations, right? Like, what's going on at that Thailand-Laos meeting? Oh, absolutely. This is Prime Minister Patong Tarn's first big outing on the world stage. Talk about a trial by fire. Yeah, no kidding. And yeah. you know those Mekong River floods are going to be a big topic. Oh, yeah. That was more than just a natural disaster, right? Right. It showed just how vulnerable these countries are, how important it is to work together, especially on disaster relief. It's like a real world example of that resilience thing they keep talking about. But it's not just Laos on her list. She's got meetings with China, the U.S., South Korea, Japan. Like, how do you even manage that? It's a real juggling act for sure. Yeah. And she's got to be strategic about it, right? Oh, yeah. Does she use these meetings? to strengthen alliances, to mm. smooth things over? Or does she try to position Thailand as a kind of mediator, especially with that Myanmar situation? Speaking of Myanmar, that's got to be a tough one for Thailand. How do you balance your own country's issues with, like, presenting a united front with ASEAN? That's the thing with all of this. It's all connected, isn't it? Mm. Domestic politics, regional stability, the global landscape, it's all intertwined. And then you've got ASEAN looking ahead, way ahead, with this vision 2045. It's like they're playing 40 chess or something. And it's a pretty bold vision. They're talking about becoming an economic powerhouse, a hub for innovation, a leader in sustainable development. It's huge. By 2045, they're projected to be the world's fourth largest economy. That's wild. But what does that even look like? Like, what does that kind of growth mean for the average person living in Southeast Asia? Well, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? Could mean higher living standards, better infrastructure, more opportunities. But they have to be careful, make sure that growth is sustainable. And that's something they seem to be aware of, at least according to this Vision 2045. So they've got the ambition, but can they actually pull it off? All Especially right. with all the other stuff we've been talking about. That's what this summit might tell us. We really have to pay attention to what they're saying about things like digital transformation, about how they're planning on attracting foreign investment, about how they're going to navigate those tensions between global powers. Because those are the things that will determine if they can actually achieve this vision. It's almost like the real work starts after everyone goes home, you know? Exactly. Yeah. This is all about laying the groundwork. Yeah. But it's important to remember, Vision 2045 isn't just about economics. Right. It's about building a Southeast Asia that is more integrated, more prosperous, more stable. And that benefits everyone, not just within the region, but globally. So, yeah, there are a lot of photo ops and diplomatic handshakes going on, but there's something much bigger at play here. It really makes you think, you know, can a group like ASEAN actually tackle these huge global problems? I mean, they have big goals, but is that enough? That's the big question, isn't it? Because they've got a lot to deal with, right? Poverty, climate change, inequality. It's a long list. But then on the other side, there's this incredible potential. They've got a young population. People are driven. 
And there's a real sense of, you know, shared identity, which is huge. It's like they're at this crossroads, right? One path leads to, like, missed opportunities. The other, well, they become a major force. And that's what's so fascinating about this summit, about this whole conversation we're having. These decisions, you know, the ones being made in Vientiane, they could determine everything. It's not just about Southeast Asia either. The impact of this, it's global. So when we're reading these headlines, listening to the speeches, what should we be looking for? Like, what are the real takeaways here? You got to look beyond the surface. Like, what are they saying about technology, about digital transformation? How are they planning to attract investment? And what about, you know, the elephant in the room, that balancing act between global superpowers? Those are the real signs of where they're headed. Because it's about more than just economics, right? Or absolutely. Vision 2045, at its heart, it's about building something better. A Southeast Asia that is prosperous, stable. It's about making sure everyone benefits, not just a select few. So ultimately, it's about creating a better future, not just for Southeast Asia, but for everyone. Exactly. And that's worth paying attention to. Wow, you've given us a lot to consider. It's amazing how something like this Ozian Summit, something that felt so, I don't know, distant, now feels so important. It's all about understanding the context, right? Because we live in a connected world, what happens in one place affects us all. That's a great point to end on. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive into the Ozin Summit. We went from decorations in Vientiane all the way to the future of global politics. It was my pleasure. And for everyone listening, remember, staying informed is just the first step. The real work is using that knowledge, you know, engaging with the world around you. Because who knows, maybe you'll be shaping the future of Ozin, maybe even the world come 2045.